Thank you for joining us. This is the P3 show, the second edition of the show. I'm glad to be here. And today I have a special guest with me, the newly minted council president, Ben Travis. Travers. Yeah. Travers, yes. Yeah, yeah. I was so worried that I will say it wrong. Oh, you got it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm super excited. Uh, we have a lot to go through today. And in part, uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, BTV Organization Day, which just passed uh, about, I think, five days ago or something to that effect, um, followed by a democracy and public service here in our city, as well as the Obscura PTV Eclipse that just happened this past Monday, and, of course, our closing segment. So without further ado, uh, welcome to the show, Council President. Thanks for having me, Romeo. Thank you so much. And of course, our counselor is also the counselor for Ward 5. And uh, how are you feeling? And I think I asked you this question four times since you've been in this building. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm feeling very good to be here with you at Town Meeting TV. Town Meeting TV is uh, such a huge asset to this community. And I'm really glad that you're doing the show, Romeo. Uh, you know, you're someone who, since you came here to Burlington, has really uh, uh, stepped in and, and stood up. Um, you're oftentimes at council meetings, uh, and I'm really thrilled that you're hosting this show. So thank you for being here today. Thank you so much, really. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm really, really excited uh, under your leadership what uh, that holds for not only just the council, but for their city as well. Um, a lot has been happening since town meeting day and now because a lot of information has to be brought to you and brought up up to speed as it were to see what's going on in terms of um, organization day, what needs to be done, swearing in the new councillors, the new mayor. How did that go about and how do you feel overall, the atmosphere, the celebration and everything? I feel really good. Um, you know, I think it's an exciting time for our city. We obviously have a new administration uh, on our city council of 12. We have five brand new city councillors. So I think that there's some challenge involved with uh, so many new people and, and are losing a lot of really sort of institutional knowledge and, and great public servants and folks like uh, Karen Paul and, and Zariah Hightower and, and others. Um, but it, it's an exciting time. There's a lot of new energy, a lot of new ideas. Uh, I think we're going to talk about Organization Day a little bit more, but um, it was just a really positive atmosphere at Organization Day a, a, a couple uh, Mondays ago. Um, I've already been having a number of meetings with the new mayor, um, and I can tell that, that she and, and her team are uh, uh, really uh, starting to get into the groove of things, and, um, and I, I just feel very optimistic uh, about the, the coming months and are being able to continue to make progress on issues of importance here in Burlington. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. And I noticed that the, <clears throat> uh, the chemistry of the new councilors that are incoming who've just been sworn in of course, you know, Organization Day is a day to celebrate new folks coming in and new uh, uh, incumbent counselors kind of restarting fresh as it were or taking um, existing business of the council to the next council as well. Um, I'm wondering how are people receiving uh, based on how, just your observation overall of the Organization Day. How did you, what, what, what is your thought process of how people are receiving not only our new mayor, but the new councillors, uh, the new, of course, council president, just the overall atmosphere? Is, is it one of uh, comfort or is this any concern? Because I know based on um, every time there's a new council uh, takes a seat, everybody's worried about what's going to happen next. Is, you know, prior um, businesses, are, are they going to be abandoned or... Are they going to be coming back to continue? The council will take over it and so on and so forth. What's, mm -hmm. what's your thought process on that? Yeah. Um, well, look, I think Vermont and, and Burlington has a really long tradition of, you know, we, we run hard in our political campaigns, and obviously we have our yes. opponents in those campaigns. Oh, yes. Um, but uh, after town meeting day and after the election, um, there's, there's a real effort uh, for us to uh, try to come together to the greatest extent we can in the collective interest of our city. So I think since town meeting day, uh, there's been um, a lot of effort put into uh, our, our trying to establish and, and set off on the right foot 
in terms of there being a, a collaborative and, and cooperative spirit. Um, I've seen that in, in a number of the new councillors and the discussions I've been having with them already. Um, and I see that in our mayor as well. Um, you heard it in her inaugural State of the City address, uh, outlining what, what her goals are, um, but also outlining a, a message of, of our wanting to um, reach those goals in, in, a, in a collective and, and collaborative spirit. So uh, I've been very glad and, and uh, am optimistic about uh, what I've seen from our new colleagues. Of course, we haven't had our first meeting yet, our first meeting uh, as a city council. This is, what, Saturday the 13th as we're filming this. Our first meeting will be on uh, Monday, April 15th, and, and we'll be off and running on a number of important issues. And so hopefully uh, sort of the, the messages of, uh, of cooperation um, end up seeing their way through into how we actually act and operate. Thank you so much for that. Um, <clears throat> I attended last uh, organization day. Um, compared to this one, though I haven't attended this one, I watched the live feed of it um, due to uh, conflict of uh, interest that I had uh, when I was going on. I was working and doing some stuff. At any rate, um, what I noticed was there was a little bit of uh, a difference in, from my perspective in the sense that um, last organization day there was a lot of federal representative attending. Uh, I think, um, I don't know who was there at the time. Uh, there were quite a number of them that showed up compared to this time. Is, is, there, is there a reason why that happened or were they just busy or something? Because there was a lot of fanfare that was happening last time. I mean, they, we had the American flag thing, you know, the seats and everything. Yep. But this time I felt it was a bare bone organization day. Is, 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 would, would you characterize as such? Well, um, if you remember a couple organization days, which was former now former Mayor Weinberger's uh, last uh, organization day, um, there was a special announcement that he planned on making at that meeting, uh, which is that um, we were renaming uh, our airport here in Burlington right. uh, after right. Senator Leahy. Okay. Um, and we were really honored to, at that meeting, actually have a, a recorded message from President Biden. Yes. And there were specific invites that had gone out both to um, Senator and Mrs. Leahy as well as oh. uh, 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 Senator Welch and okay. uh, Representative Ballant. And so I think that's why um, you saw um, so many folks from the federal delegation there. Okay. But um, I do also hear what you're saying in terms of uh, the different atmosphere. Um, you know, I, I think, look, I mean, Mayor Weinberger <laughs> had been doing this for 12, uh, years. 12 years or so. It had a right. number of organization days. It's, it's not surprising to me right. um, that there was uh, a little more excitement and buzz right. around uh, Mayor Mulvaney Stanek's uh, uh, first organization day. Yes. Um, obviously, it was a very historic night as well as uh, Burlington inaugurated uh, its first um, a woman and, and openly gay mayor. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, I, I, I was happy to see that, that really most of the people in the room were, were folks that had been um, engaged in, very involved in her campaign, and were very excited about this uh, historic night. So um, right. I, I will say, that said, you know, I was thrilled looking out into the audience. We, we did have Senator and Mrs. Leahy there. Yes. Uh, former Mayor Clavel was there. We had a number of uh, statewide representatives as well, and, and Treasurer Pichak and uh, Attorney General Clark. Um, I thought it was a very nice touch that uh, Attorney General Clark, who was the first woman to hold that office as well, um, uh, was the individual who uh, swore in um, our new mayor. Um, so I thought that there was a, a, a lot of importance around that. That is awesome, really. And um, what, do, what do you think of the uh, first city address? Uh, do you think it spoke to everybody who was both there and not there? Uh, some of the uh, because when we have a brand new mayor uh, and who's taken over, generally it's a unity that we focus on, mm -hmm. starting fresh, being be unified. Do you think it was very unifying uh, speech and like start a fresh page and let's come together, irrespective of you know what the uh, town meeting day was like? Because it was incredibly historic and very fun to do it, and I can't wait for many more to come. Um, but what, what is your overall feel in terms of the uh, s state of city address, the first one for our, our new mayor? Yeah, I think um, our new mayor, both during her campaign as well as in uh, the first state of the city address, 
um, is, is trying to put a message out there that, that I think is, is speaking to as many Burlingtonians as possible. Right. Um, you know, I, I didn't hear uh, a, a, a too politically aligned message one way or another. My sense was that it was uh, a message of, of unity and, and really are trying to uh, set the right collaborative tone on the important issues before us. Right. You know, I mean, I think almost all of us agree on, on what the biggest issues are ahead for Burlington in terms of community safety, in terms of housing, in terms of affordability. Right. Um, you know, we'll have our differences from time to time on, on how to get there, um, but we all have the same goals in mind. Right. Um, that's the great thing about being in Burlington, right? I mean, uh, uh, from my perspective, at least, yes. uh, you know, when you talk about Democrats and progressives on the city council or, or now in the mayor's office, yes. it's not like it is in Washington D.C. Or, or even in the state house here in Montpelier, where we tend to get along. We, t we get along a little bit better, <laughs> right? You're not you're not really yeah. trying to work across the aisle. What I always say is, Democrats yes. and progressives, it's more like working across right. the armrest. We're a little bit closer together, yes. uh, and so I was um, I, I was glad to hear the, the tone that was set by the uh, new mayor's amazing. inaugural address. That's amazing, and just for you as our you know our new city. Um, uh, council president, but also somebody who has been for quite a amount of time involved in public service. Um, I, when I was watching uh, the organization day, I could tell the jubilation that was in the atmosphere and that that you do bring a certain panache, as it were, to, to the service. Okay. Really, you do. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I mean, and I'm saying it, I mean it. Because <laughs> so... And I was personally, I was genuinely glad that uh, you're going to be our our new council president. I was sad to lose our former council president, uh, Karen Book. She's been incredibly amazing, gracious, and I'm wondering because it's also to a certain degree, it's such a big shoes to feel. But it couldn't happen to a better person than you personally. I think honestly, uh, watching you, uh, what you've been doing since I've come to this city, and just some of the how you brought, um, how do you say, a certain level of control in, in that, you know, because a lot of people will bring different things, right? And different type of resolutions and so on and so forth. But to the amendments that you brought in when you were, you know, uh, before city council president, I've always enjoyed that, seeing it happen. But now that you're the council president, there's additional burden on you to kind of make sure that the council members are observing on what is really realistic to you know, bring before the council. But at the same time also have that panache as it were to the council, right? So just give me an idea on that organization day specifically, um, how you felt and because I know the vote went through and when you were saying I for yourself, everybody just kind of joined you in that, you know, the, in, in excitement. Um, how, how, how did you feel overall and where do you see yourself going for the next 12 months? Well, uh, first of all, I should come on the show more often, Romeo, because I'm making <laughs> me feel good about myself. So <laughs> thank you for all the kind words. Thank you. Thank um, you. I mean, I I'm excited to take on the new role of council president. I'm honored to take on the role of council president. Uh, the council president is a role that's elected by your colleagues in the city council, and I was uh, uh, thrilled to have the support of, of nearly all of my colleagues in, in taking on um, this new position. Um, you're right that there are big shoes to fill. I, too, will miss uh, Councillor Paul, who had served on our council for, for many, many years and was um, excellent, really, I think. And um, I, I think, first and foremost, um, sort of having a mentality of, uh, of, of, of no surprises. Um, you know, by the time you get to the council meeting, um, let's try our best to be uh, open and honest with each other um, to sort of um, hash it out where things need to be hashed out um, and to, um, you know, not, not have too many uh, unexpected turns uh, once you get to the city council meeting. And so, you know, my hope is that I'll be able to uh, continue to work with all of my colleagues on the council uh, to give them the, the respect and the transparency and the openness they deserve, to give them uh, enough time to consider um, the issues, um, for them to know that they're, they're always going to have uh, an open ear um, if they come to me on a particular issue and uh, are seeking feedback and advice on a particular direction a resolution or issue should go, should go in. 
And so uh, I, I think President Paul uh, did an excellent job at that. And uh, while big shoes to fill, um, it's my intention to, to keep doing that. And, and as we've planned our agenda now for our first meeting, uh, I've tried very hard to uh, continue to, to work very closely with the new administration such that we're in constant communication about what's coming up uh, and my getting their feedback on, on whether an item, for example, should, should be on our agenda, should it be on the deliberative portion of our agenda or the consent portion, and similar discussions with our colleagues on the council such that, again, no surprises, they know what's coming, they can ask the questions that they need to ask and are fully prepared uh, for our meeting when it comes around on Mondays. Perfect, thank you. And, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of Organization Day in the sense that it's, it's a sense of renewal. But also, I would love to see a much more fun atmosphere. I know food has, I don't know if ever been talked about. Of course, I don't want to, you know, spoil the moment and uh, create a lot of mess for <laughs> <laughs> the folks that are putting together the, uh, the event. But, um, but I would love to see, hopefully, I don't know if that is possible next year, much more fanfare and you know because I know a lot of families probably watch uh, the, the the organization day and a lot of city council meeting um, maybe some entertaining events just prior to prior to swearing in uh, the ceremony and that kind of stuff because it feels as much as I love it somewhat bureaucratic you know adding a little bit of spices to it what do you think I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I love it it's a great idea um... You know, I will say to, to, the, to the new mayor's uh, uh, credit here, um, you know, they coming into this role uh, brand new and needing to bring in a new team around them. And there's not that much time right. between town meeting day uh, and organization day. What I think, I think town meeting day this year was on March 5th and then our organization day was on April 1st. So right. yeah, you have less than a month uh, to, to put your team together and then to uh, put together what, what is you know, a, a, a pretty big event. Right. Um, so, we almost will do. <laughs> well, yes. So I think, <laughs> I think. Uh, look, I mean, um, next organization day, we will still have yeah. uh, Mayor Mulvaney Stanek uh, swearing in uh, a new city council at that point in time. Yes. And, um, yes. you know, I, I think they did a great job on April 1st. But yeah. sure, uh, why not yeah. uh, add some more fanfare and entertainment around Extra next year? Extra spice goes a long way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, the only other thing that I'll say around that yes. um, is that uh, I, I suspect that they were thinking about trying to uh, do some after event or, you know, bring in some food or fan right. or whatever it may be. Right, right. But this was such a historic night and there were so many people that I wanted to be there. Yeah. I think there was understandably some concern about whether or not they, they could host an event like that without right. some folks feeling left out. Right, you right, know, City right. Hall and Contois Auditorium only fits so many people yeah. and you were there, you saw it was, it was filled to the brim and right. it was, right. uh, it was standing room only, you know. Uh, already a half hour before the event even started. Have they considered like opening up, say like the church marketplace kind of corner up up to a point and then the park a little bit? Good, I good ideas for next yeah. year. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that'd be amazing. Um, so I, I'm glad that you shared with us uh, the organization day. I think it was a fun day and I'm looking forward to the next one really. And maybe I might be a counselor, who knows by then. <laughs> Anything is possible. Anything is possible. <laughs> you, um, you would be a great city counselor, Romeo. Thank you kindly. Yes. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, so I wanted to move on to something that is dear to my heart, really, as much as Organization Day it is, uh, democracy and public service. And you embody that service. You do that every single day, not only just for the city, but for your family as well. Um, and I was wondering, Based on all the stuff that is happening in our city in terms of democracy and the ability for people to exercise the freedom of speech, the ability to be able to bring some items to the forefront for council consideration, I was wondering how, based on the amount of time that you've been in city council, based on the amount of time that you've been out there um, campaigning, door knocking, and so on and so forth, and just even being a dad, uh, what, what is your thought on democracy and public service, just in general, and how that pertains to, to the point where you're at today as our city council president? Because it's, I'm sure it has a lot of effect on you and your family and how you do your life and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, 
Well, thank you for the question. First of all, I think it's a it's a good one. Um, question that could go in a lot of different directions, right. but I think what I'll focus on, <laughs> I think what I'll focus on first I, is. I gave um, you an open-ended question. Yes, yeah, it's very open-ended. <laughs> um, yes. But I think uh, what I will focus on is, you know, look, when, when I was a kid, uh, you know, my my mom was someone who really instilled in, in me and my brother and sister uh, the importance of community. And, and being there for your community, yes. um, whether that's public service or whether that's uh, just being there for your friends and family in their time of need. Um, it was um, really uh, a, uh, a principle that my mom uh, lived by and, and taught us the importance of. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, she served on my local school board. Uh, so I, I saw that and was inspired by that. And so uh, really, at any stage in my life, um, you know, I've, I've tried my best to sort of lean in in a way uh, where I can be there for uh, the folks in my community. Um, and that's been true ever since my, my wife and I moved here to Burlington and, and started a family. Um, and the amazing thing about Burlington as compared to uh, other places I've lived is that if you want to lean in, which so many people in our community do, um, it's not that difficult, right? I mean, you know this because uh, you now serve on our Church Street Marketplace and you're here with a show on Town Meeting TV and uh, I believe you 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 are or have served on your Neighborhood Planning Assembly yes. um, Steering Committee. Um, when, when we moved here to Burlington, I, I raised my hand and started to serve on uh, our Housing Board of Review um, and then served on our Parks Commission wow. uh, as well as our Neighborhood Planning Assembly. And, and it's amazing to live in a community uh, where, A, there are so many opportunities to lean in like that and, and to serve your community, um, but also, uh, B, um, where uh, so many people want to step up uh, and, and serve in those roles. Um, a little plug, um, you know, most of our vacancies come up on our boards and commissions on, a, on an annual basis. Um, towards the uh, end of next week, in, in mid to late April, uh, we will be posting here all of our vacancies on boards and commissions here in Burlington and then hopefully acting to fill them at, at one of our city council meetings in, in mid-June. Um, and so, uh, you know, putting that out there is, is a call to our community yes. uh, to uh, take a look at that. And if you want to serve, uh, step up, get an application in, um, talk to other folks around you and, and, and um, again, step up to serve. Right. They can go to the city website, right, to, to apply and all Yeah, that's stuff. right. The city of Burlington's yeah. website uh, will uh, be posting the, the annual list of, of boards and commission vacancies. Okay. Um, and so uh, I would encourage folks in the community to uh, look out for that, stay tuned. And right. if they're interested in one of those boards or commissions, uh, please step up and serve because it's something you can do and, and that so many people here in Burlington do. Right. And I, was, I remember when I was uh, being appointed to the church and marketplace, there was another... Uh, post, uh, commission post that was up for grab as well that I did apply for. <laughs> um, and I think you're not allowed to serve too, right? Is that a conflict of interest? What, what is what is the reasoning behind it? I was trying to find out. Because if somebody's available to have a time to serve two separate commissions and yeah. they maybe you know have some talent to offer, I was wondering what... Uh, if the city in the future can, I guess that might take a charter change. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. Um, I actually don't know that there is a rule about your not being able to serve on, on two boards or commissions. But again, but I, what I will say is, you know, there may be, sort of be an unwritten rule okay. uh, of uh, trying to put folks on, on one or the other. Okay. Uh, if only because there are so many folks that, right. that want to that step want up to and serve. And yes. so the more yes. opportunities that we can provide folks, Absolutely. Uh, the better. Absolutely. I agree with you. And, you know, this past year um, has been very, to a certain degree, controversial. And I don't think this year will be any different. And um, there are quite a number of items that came on the, on the city, in front, of the, in front of the city council, as it were. And there have been quite a number of concerns from residents or just folks that were trying to get signatures on specific issues that may, have, may, may or may have not passed at the council level. And I was wondering how, as a counselor, how that has affected your thoughts on what democracy or direct democracy means in the city. And because in truth, you know, it doesn't mean that because it's a democracy, everybody can do whatever they want the moment they, woke, they wake up, rather. 
And so I was wondering how that translates into, uh, based on your just your view, because from my perspective watching this, is that I see fellow Burlingtonians out there, um, sometimes rightly guided, sometimes wrongly misguided, trying to get a specific uh, subject or an issue before the representative, as it were, of our city. And but the thought process is that as a direct democracy, um, people want to present something, even if it makes no sense, to the representatives before us in the council. And so I was just wondering, uh, this year as, as a council president and last year as well, how has your thought process evolved in terms of seeing how that is uh, evolving in our city? Is our, 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 our city really valuing direct democracy as it should be? And, but also keeping in, 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 in mind that um, everything that is put before the city does not mean that it gets you know, a yes immediately. It has to be scrutinized, it has to be double checked, triple checked, but also make sure that it's also in the best interest of almost hopefully everybody, if not the majority, you know. So um, I just I just wanted to kind of dig in a little bit into your thought process with respect from the democracy uh, point of view and as well as just public service as it were. Yeah. Um... Good question. I think I think I'll answer it in in a couple different ways. Okay. One is, uh, you know, you flagged um, the fact that you know there were there were some meetings, particularly towards the end of this last council year, uh, where there was a little more sort of tension and and frustration. Yes. Uh, right there in City Hall and Contoy's Auditorium, and uh, you know, two issues that um, were most recent that immediately come to mind were uh, one about the. Um, F-35s and, and really what the issue there was was uh, a question about whether or not we were going to extend the lease yes. uh, for the Air National Guard at the airport. Um, and then the other were uh, folks who were interested in, in the city council and, and here in Burlington uh, are taking a stand with respect to uh, the war in Gaza. Correct. Um, and <clears throat> a couple different things around that. Uh, one is I, I think um, in terms of folks feeling frustrated within Contoy's auditorium itself. I think by, by the time you get to City Hall, the night of the meeting, that's not the place, unfortunately, uh, to um, give folks an opportunity to feel heard and respected with respect to their point of view. Because uh, we have a public forum with a clock on it uh, that only <laughs> yes. gives folks two minutes. Right. You know, here you and I have been talking for, uh, you know, half an hour or, or so here. It's, it's, it's flown by, um, you know, and even by the time we get to the end of this program, there right. will be a lot more uh, to, to, to discuss. Yes. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I think on, on both of those issues that I just mentioned, um, you know, as, as issues like that that are, are more controversial continue to come up before the council, um, I would look forward to working with my fellow councillors as well as with the mayor to see whether or not we can, you know, give folks in our community a, a more advanced notice of the fact that these issues are coming up. Um, give folks an opportunity to um, be heard more than they can in the two-minute window that they can at, a, at our public forum. Right, right. Perhaps lean on our neighborhood planning assemblies um, or our community justice center uh, or other resources here uh, in, in the community to, to facilitate true dialogue on these issues um, rather than uh, sort of speaking into the void right, uh, right. At, at, at public forum where uh, our rules actually say that you can't engage back and forth. Um, the other issue that I'll bring up is, um, you know, there, there, there was a, a question that came before the city council in this last session where folks were looking to uh, uh, put a, a referendum on the ballot. Um, they had collected enough signatures to require that the city council uh, consider whether, whether to put the item on the ballot. Um, but, you know, our, our ordinances and our, our charter here in Burlington say that um, even in that case, uh, it, it's, it's not automatic that a question um, gets on the ballot. And uh, two town meeting days ago, um, there was a proposed charter change on the ballot that, that would have changed that. Um, if voters in Burlington had, had voted in favor of that charter change, um, there would have been a mechanism by which uh, folks um, could directly place a question on the ballot for consideration by the voters here. Um, was that, but sorry to interrupt, was that Prop Zero? That's what a number of folks called it, was, okay. was Proposition okay. Zero. I thought it was a good I name. Still I don't think know what it's the a good word name. Zero meant, but okay. 
Well, <laughs> I think the idea is Proposition Zero would be the foundation for if it passed, it. then you could have Proposition One, Proposition Two, Proposition Three as, sure. as, you, as you move on. Oh. Um, and uh, it's, you, you see it in California. California has a mechanism right. by which you can put propositions directly on the ballot there. Right. And so maybe it came from there. But, um, but in any event, um, it, even though I, I, I generally supported the concept of that personally, um, it didn't pass. Um, and from my perspective, uh, I saw that as, as Burlington voters saying that they did still want their city council having a say with respect to whether matters get on the ballot one way or another. Um, and the last question that we considered did not make it to the ballot. Um, that said, I, I certainly respect the effort that was put into it and, and understand the frustration of those um, that, uh, that, that felt it, it should have made its way to the ballot. And, um, I would like to do more to ensure that that frustration uh, doesn't happen again in the, in the coming year. So if, if we can find uh, with our fellow councillors and with our new mayor right. um, sort of a, a better way of handling issues like that, um, I, I have some ideas myself and, and we'll look forward to working with my colleagues on it. Perfect. And the beauty thing about democracy is that sometimes it's frustrating because you're not getting what you want, <laughs> you know, because you're part of a pool. It's not just you. It's not a... Uh, a dictatorship you know you gotta align uh try to find a word to work with other people uh to get something passed but something that really really alarmed me was to the extent how some people were ridiculing the mayor and not because of just freedom of speech but to the level of code of conduct that it reached um and it frankly scared some people at the you know not to rehash the past but you know, democracy is very fragile, but if it's not protected and, how do you say, uh, nurtured, but also make sure, make sure that people understand that there's, there's a way to conduct yourself in the midst of other people, right? And I felt that was failed to be observed during the council, last council meetings uh, around December. And it really alarmed me, and I was like, oh my goodness, is this what's going to be like the next, you know, year council meetings and so on and so forth? Because, you know, when you put out yourself there, at, you know, you've been council for quite a while and a council president now. And I worry that people don't necessarily appreciate because this is a volunteer work, actually, to begin with. You have a family to support. You have a job to go to. So you, you and the mayor and the councillors, especially the councillors specifically, do take out of your time as volunteers to get the job done, the people's work, as it were. And I was incredibly concerned how people are interpret uh, interpreting democracy in the wrong way and show up and almost like demand, not even like in a respectful way, but just the level of vulgar and just throwing stuff at you, almost like confronting you right at your desk, right? So I'm wondering what are the hopefully some precautions I've seen some tapes that have been put in place and so on and so forth but what are additional messages being sent to the NPAs and other channels to remind folks hey look we care about democracy we care about direct democracy we care about the ability for you to exercise your first amendment but also realize that we're fellow beings we put ourselves out there you know some, some sort of a messaging uh, not something that's just being said from the meeting when it's about to start but rather a direct outreach to constituencies and to, to, to behave better more when showing up rather than acting like it's a free for all event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, uh, first of all, you mentioned the NPAs, our, our neighborhood planning assemblies, yes. and um, actually because of a, a resolution that I introduced <clears throat> and that we passed this last year, um, it, you know, it acknowledged the fact that our, our different NPAs, we have them all around the city. We got yes. a Ward 5 NPA, Ward 6 NPA, a Ward 8 NPA, Ward 1 NPA, and so on. Right. Um, you know, th they have their own bylaws and, and governing documents, but they're all different. And, and not all of them have their own sort of rules and bylaws that include language on um, how folks should conduct themselves in public forum. Um, and, and needing to stay away from personal attacks and, and yes. focus on the issues. And so uh, at the NPAs themselves, I'm excited that because of a resolution we passed, I know the city attorney's office and our, uh, our, our Department of Racial Equity, Inclusion and Belonging is going to be working with our NPAs to try to uh, update their bylaws along those lines. Right, right. Um, I will also go back to something that I said before, right, which is that I, I think that a part of the reason why people sometimes show up at the city council meetings with so much frustration is because 
they feel like they haven't been heard yet and then they show up for this just two minute window within public forum and that's their one and only and first opportunity to be heard yes. and they're frustrated because truthfully you know by the time you get to the city council meeting night of I mean, most people know that the, the issue has is, is already been, the minds have already been made up, right? Uh, and and um, we, we sort of have some sense as to the direction that a, a vote's going to go into. I think if we provided folks an outlet and an opportunity to engage in true dialogue and to uh, uh, feel heard and respected in the days and weeks leading up to a controversial issue, right. uh, we could do better around that, and I think that it would help. Um, I also think that our own city council, and you know, we sort of have a number of unwritten rules around our public forum. Um, if you look to other city councils and legislative bodies, though, that they have more written rules uh, around um, uh, the way public forums should proceed. So, I mean, just as an example, right, we, we have an unwritten rule that when you come to the city council meeting and, and speak at public forum, you can speak as uh, in, in as forceful a way as you want, as long as it's about differences on the issues. Right. But if you engage in personal attacks, uh, that's when um, we're supposed to Stop. Sh shut it down. Right. Um, but that's an unwritten rule, <laughs> yep. right? It exists nowhere in our council rules. Right. Um, I think it's a good one. Yeah. Um, it's one that I will be enforcing as council president. Um, Do we get to see the gavel? We, you may get to see some gaveling, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but... Um, you know, I, I think that there is some room for improvement even within our own city council rules right. uh, uh, to, to ensure that um, our, our city hall and our, our auditorium remains a safe place. And just the, the, the last thing I'll say on that, Romeo, not to go on too long about it, is uh, you're right. This is a volunteer role, right? And it's not just about the 12 of us that are around the city council table, right. but it's also about who's going to replace us, right? Who else is going to step up and decide to run for city council? And to that end... You know, we here in Burlington need to make sure that we protect uh, local public service and local public office right. as something that's attractive to the next generation of city councilors. And so that, that to me, is of most importance um, as we uh, enforce uh, rules, whether they be written or unwritten, to the end of ensuring that, that public service is, is, a, is a safe place. When you're in a volunteer role, you shouldn't have to show up every other Monday uh, to be subjected to personal attacks. Right, right. No, I, I agree with you 100%, really. And I will admit, I, I'm not going to give up public service, but some of the meeting when I was watching, and I'm like, holy smokes. <laughs> you know, I mean, I work uh, a public service uh, at the transit center, and I do get to experience a lot of... Uh, back and forth uh, situations without having to get into specifics. However, um, one thing that I really wanted to talk to you about was uh, prior to our next subject is the two minute speaking time. Mm -hmm. I know that has been a very touchy situation as it were. And I was wondering would you announce to the world that we'll have two more minutes or one more minutes in the future? Uh, That's it's, something you have to go back to your know, fellow counselors. And yeah, no, I mean, it's, it, um, I, I, th I think it's a good point. I appreciate you raising it. Um, at our first public forum here on, on April 15th coming up, I, I think we'll likely continue the practice of two minutes, but uh, I'm, I'm more than open to considering a change. And so thank you for raising it. And, and I will talk to my fellow counselors about it. Thank you so much. I remain hopeful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, a subject that I also wanted to talk about uh, was the obscure BTV. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very historic event, at least, I think in our lifetime. You know, um, I don't know if we're going to see the next one here in Burlington. But, uh, but it's, it's been an exciting leading up to that point and after. And you know what I noticed is that it really went much better than I was thinking because um, there hasn't been any like craziness or a lot of road rage as it were. People came in, watched it. I don't know, I'm sure you watched with your family as well. Where were you on that day? And what, what, what was like a council president watching the eclipse? And tell, tell us your story about it. Yeah, uh, well, it, it was an amazing event. Um, 
you know, not not just obviously looking up in the sky and what you saw there, but also just the, the sense of community and sort of collective joy here in Burlington. Uh, I keep asking myself, like, how many people were here in Burlington visiting for that day who have now made the decision that they're going to come back here and make Burlington their home? I hope a lot. Uh, I hope a lot, too, because it, it was that kind of day where I think Burlington was, was really at its best. And, of right. course, it was helped by the fact that we had... Uh, some some clear skies and some warm temperatures, which, yes. as you know, isn't necessarily the norm on on April eighth. Right. Um, you know, I got an eight year old, a six year old, and a two year old. Um, their schools were closed for the Good. eclipse, so we had the Good. whole family Good. together. Uh, we went down to the the waterfront along the lake um, in the south end, and and we set up camp down there and had our uh, eclipse glasses ready to <laughs> uh, look up and. Um, you know, I, I was someone who was really excited about this and sort of, sort of knew and hoped that as long as we didn't have clouds covering the way that this was going to be an amazing event. Um, but once I saw it and once totality happened, um, it exceeded my greatest expectations as to, as to what it was going to be like. It, it was truly awesome uh, in, in, in the truest sense of that word. Right, right. Um, I kept on saying like five times it's awesome. Really. Yes. I mean, I, I couldn't hold myself really because... The moment the eclipse is in full total, you're like, this this is insane, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's it's surreal, unreal, looking up and, and seeing the, the sun completely blocked like that. And right. one of the things I was surprised by was yeah. like, what, what the difference is between 99% <laughs> totality and 100% right. totality. Because right. even if just one little bit of the sun is peeking out, you, you can't look up at it. Exactly. But as soon as it covers the whole sun, right. you could look at it. I will say, you mentioned Obscura BTV. Yeah. Yes, That's the... Yes. Uh, name that was given to uh, the event that the city of Burlington right. put on. Um, and huge credit is owed to the city staff that, that leaned in on that, folks from our parks department, folks from Burlington City Arts, and for uh, our business and workforce development office. Um, yes. yes, the council heard a lot from folks like um, <laughs> yes. Zach Williamson and Dorian Kraft at, at yes. Burlington City Arts, from Cara, Cara uh, Almasari from right. Uh, from uh, uh, business and workforce development, um, Cindy White and, and others at the Parks Department just did an amazing job putting on an amazing event. Right, um, right. And I was thrilled with the way that it went. No, it was it was really amazing. And I'm glad that I had a front seat of seeing from the beginning to the end and how things were coming together in terms of having uh, folks be able to, you know, offer food and, you know, on, on the marketplace. But also, I think for me, what I, I took away from that day was I can't believe I experienced this in yeah. my lifetime, because I always hear, you know, when I was uh, when I was not here initially uh, and I was living in other parts of the world, I was like, I always hear there's a total eclipse happen happening somewhere, but I'm like, you know, who cares, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, even to the day, I'd say two days prior, I'm like, I oh, forget about, it. I'll be I'll be fine, you know. And then Monday came, I'm like, oh man, this is it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and now, now that I've seen it, I understand why there's some folks who, who travel specifically to see these things. Right. I've, I've talked to a number of people already that are uh, looking to go to Iceland or Spain in a couple of years yes. when that, that passes yeah. over there. In Greenland, um, uh, they're supposed to get, what, like 13 minutes worth of complete solar eclipse. Let's go to yeah. Greenland. <laughs> yes, yes. If you're buying the ticket, I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this, this, is, this is amazing. And uh, I, I appreciate for you being here. Uh, and uh, is there anything you wanted to share or say um, with, with the city today? Beyond? No, I mean, uh, thank you very much for having me. I'm, I'm glad that you have this show, P3 here, Romeo. No, no one better to do it. Okay, uh, as I mentioned before, you're someone who, since you moved here to Burlington, has, has stood up in, in lots of really important ways. And I'm, I'm thrilled that you're hosting the show. I'm thrilled to be on your, I think I'm your first guest. You are, uh, you, you are. You, and you hosted I, your first show <laughs> alone. So I'm I very be honored. More thrilled. <laughs> You know, <laughs> well, me you, too. Really. I'm very honored. Um, I'm honored to serve as, as our next council president yes. here. Yes. Uh, we got a lot of big issues ahead of us here in Burlington, like I mentioned before, related to community safety, yes. related to ensuring everyone has housing, related to uh, ensuring a sense of affordability such that everyone, uh, uh, regardless of their background or, or what they do for a living, uh, can, can live and, and work here in Burlington. Right. Uh, and, and I'm excited by the collective spirit, by the new energy, uh, and, and think that we're going to be able to do a lot of good things here to continue to make progress on those issues. Thank you so much, Council President. And folks, you've heard it, you know, our one and only Council President, and I am rooting for him for a very successful Council Presidency. I know that there's a lot happening in our city, 
and I know that he has a lot to juggle with, just just with, with everything that is happening in our city and in this world. And um, I invite you to this conversation, and this is not the last of it, and uh, this is... This is the way to exercise democracy, public service, and everything in between. So thank you for being here. Feel free to contact the show as well. I look forward to hearing from you. Until on the next show, thank you for joining us, and have a wonderful day.